What is the secret about time that can help you avoid prolonged pain? What can you do to reset your life after hardship? Ultimately, what do you do when your life didn't turn out as you planned? We're going to answer these and more in this adventure story from South America. So how do you respond when your life suddenly rewrites itself? How do you handle unplanned paths, unexpected turns, plot twists, dream shifts, detours, and curveballs? What do you do when your unmet expectations have you stuck in disappointment? What if you wish none of your hardships had happened? Can't we just go back in time, travel to our teens or early 20s to better prepare ourselves? What would you say to that innocent soul before uncharted destinies sabotaged your future plans? I believe a wise wizard will unveil the secret to our soul-searching quest for these answers. But first, where are we? How did I end up here? And why am I talking about life's unmet expectations in such a beautiful place? My name is Zachary, and the start of this story tragically unveils that my last relationship of seven years ended rather traumatically. Let's just say my life now is not what I planned in my 20s. If you've ever had a close relationship fail, your heart knows the feelings of confusion, disappointment, loss, disorientation, loneliness, and sudden lack of purpose. Most likely without the articulation of those feelings. More of a war between heart-clenching pain and unexplainable lingering numbness. Am I right? Well, I sure didn't want to stay stuck in the trenches of that war. If I didn't learn the secret about time, I fear my mind would get lost in time with the disappointment of what wasn't anymore. I needed an adventure to get out of my head and away from the noise. I'm going on an adventure! <laughs> and like my beloved friend Frodo, I found myself hiking across similar green hills of splendor. I believe the best adventure is world travel, because you're forced outside of your norm, your comfort zone, and your vices. Moreover, solo traveling requires courage, unlocks creativity, and boosts confidence. So I bought a $200 ticket to Ecuador and find myself solo traveling across the Andes. I said goodbye to the Quichua villagers this morning and practiced embracing my emotions as I walked away in this video. We then pondered the pervasive lie about time as I trekked down the canyon in this video. And we concluded that time is not money, but a gift. Time is not just an illusion, but a gift. So now I'm contrasting this gift with the hardships I've experienced in my own timeline. How can that be a gift? Well, I don't want to return to the trenches of mental warfare between pain and numbness. So it's imperative I find the answer while we continue hiking uphill to the next village. I'll attempt to give you some geographic context of where I've been the last few days. Started up over the other side of that peak there. In fact, I was standing on top of that one, I believe. That was 12,800 feet. And just on the other side is Kilotoa Laguna. So the big volcanic lake is on the back side of that. And then you hike down this side and on the other side of that ridge there was a little Andean village called Guayana San Pedro. And I ended up staying there two days because I just loved it so much. And it was, there's just so much tranquility. And then I hike around this side and then I was standing right on that ledge there before dropping down and zigzagging through all those trails there. And then back around, across the valley there, over to here, all the way back to that landslide area there and then down to the river, and then I've been zigzagging all the way back up here. And I have more to climb. So I just use this as an excuse to take a break and, <laughs> okay, I'll give you a video of where I've come and where I'm going. If you appreciate the hike, leave a thumbs up on the video if you haven't already, and I shall keep hiking upwards. This hike feels like the journey in my mind. I had to go down into the canyons of deep pain and release the rivers of tears at the bottom before climbing up the other side. The uphill journey takes both determination and self-care, including breaks along the way. Take a little rest. I've done long hikes, like 100 mile hikes in the Himalayas and stuff, but whew, getting used to the elevation. I'm still at 10,500 feet here. 
So, perfect opportunity to lean against the pine and eat the protein bar that I've been packing. As my energy weakens and my will wants to give up mm-hmm. on the climb, I wish I could avoid the pain altogether. Mm. With my heart beating, I wish none of my relational losses had happened. I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. As I finally reach the village and meet these alpacas, we discover the secret. Time is a gift because time is given to us. If time is given, then it must come from a source that has it. Could it then be said that time is a gift given to us by something higher than time itself? Can something even give? Or could it be someone gives us time? There are other forces at work in this world, Frodo, besides the will of evil. And that is an encouraging thought. An encouraging thought to believe we are not alone in our hardships. Someone is there with a gift for us. So if time is a gift because someone lovingly gives us time, then what are we to do with the time given to us? Well, if you were to give a child a gift, what would you expect them to do with it? They'd gladly receive it, quickly open it, and then wholeheartedly enjoy it. So how do we enjoy this gift of time? There is an ancient song that says, In his presence there is fullness of joy. What if true joy is found in the relationship of the one who gives us the gift of time? Isn't that what we all want? To live joyful lives? Time in his presence? There is fullness of joy? What if we're called to be present with the giver of time? To receive this present, open each minute with childlike anticipation, and simply enjoy it. I've decided to let go of my past by no longer wishing none of my hardships had happened and enjoy the gift of being wholeheartedly present in each moment. Let me know in the comments what you will do with your gift of time.